those who love him first. Allah has no love for rebellious sinners or unbelievers. In Islam, your relationship to Allah is a slave to master relationship. Surah 19 verse 93, there is none in the heavens and the earth, but comes unto the most beneficent, Allah, as a slave. A master doesn't automatically love his slave. A master may eventually come to love a slave who serves him well for many years, but what slave master is ever going to lay down his life for his slaves? The New Testament, or David Wood's favorite book, uses the same terminology. Now, I want to point out his David Wood's inconsistency or his hypocrisy, because apparently he just keeps pointing the fingers back at, or he keeps pointing the fingers at the Quran without realizing that three fingers are pointing back at him because the New Testament or the Bible uses the same exact terms or terminology. According to the New Testament, and I'm, I'm just going to be focusing on New Testament terms, and I'm not even going to be going into the Old Testament, but according to the New Testament, we are slaves of God in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16, Romans chapter 6, verse 22, etc., Paul is a slave to Christ in Romans in Romans chapter 1 verse 1 also see Jude chapter 1 verse 1 so according to the New Testament we are not only slaves to Christ but slaves uh, are not only slaves of God but we are also slaves of Christ according to uh, you know 1 Peter Romans Ephesians and Paul Paul refers to himself as a slave of Christ and so does Jesus or allegedly so does Jesus' half-brother Jude in uh, Jude chapter 1 verse 1. So the terminology or the term slave of God is not just used in the Quran. It's also used in the New Testament itself as you, as we've uh, seen on the uh, screen there, um, you know, the, the verses there. So... Um, so why are, the question really arises, why are we referred to as slaves of God in the New Testament and the Quran? To know who is the real king, the real master, the ruler of humanity. To be a slave of God is to seek his will in all things. So according to the New Testament or according to the Bible and the Quran, nobody is spiritually free. Even atheists are slaves to something or someone. Like atheists, like everybody worships something or everyone in enslaved to something even atheists are enslaved to their career or their materialistic desires or their um or you know their husbands or their wives or their girlfriends or their boyfriends or whatever like a even atheists are slaves or they're um they're submitting to something or someone so everybody worships something even the most atheistic person will worship materialistic things or, you know, careers or, or, you know, like they'll submit themselves to their husbands or their wives or whatever. So we belong to God and to him we shall return. So the term slave of God is an, appro is an appropriate term because we belong to God. We are not free. According to the Quran and the Bible, we are nobody is spiritually free either we're slave to sin or we're slave to you know material materialistic things or we're slave to like everybody's a slave to something it doesn't it doesn't matter if you're atheist pagan whatever you're bound or you're enslaved to something we belong to god and to him we shall return so the term slave is an appropriate term because you know we all belong to god and we shall we should seek out to do his will because he's the master of all things and we're just as humans we're just slaves we're not equal to god in any way shape or form according to both the new testament and the old testament so the conclusion here is that the bible and the quran both use the same term to make a point we are not free as believers but we are we are spiritually enslaved to belong to god and the reason why we're spiritually enslaved to God is to do his will. Hence, the term slave is appropriate to get that point across, according to not only the Quran, but according to the New Testament itself, which uses the same term or uses the same word, which is uh, the Greek word 
uh, used in those New Testament passages translates as slave. So the Bible and the, or the New Testament and the Quran uh, use that term to make a point or to drive home the point that we belong to God and nobody's spiritually free. And the reason why we're slaves to God is to do his will. Like a master will, uh, will make sure that a slave does his will. So as slaves to God, we are... Uh, we are uh, trying or we should do what his will commands us to do. So like a slave will do what his master wills. Same thing with us. As slaves of God, we should do what God wills because he's the ultimate master or he's the first master and the last master. Uh, he's the everlasting, etc., etc. According to the Quran, he's for, or according to the Bible and the Quran, God is forever. God is everlasting. God has no beginning. He has no end. He is forever, literally. So we should uh, submit ourselves to the everlasting master and not the temporary masters that we have on earth. So that's why I think the term slave of God is used. But my point is that the reason why I'm making this video is because David Wood is inconsistent or is being hypocritical because the New Testament itself uses the term slave of God and slave of Christ. Uh, stay tuned. More videos going up ahead.